pictures on the board. And, and what, can it, what can it do then with the object? Rotate it? Oh, you can do everything with the tack. What I did on the tack is a very small subset of what the tack actually does. Mm -hmm. It um, goes, um, they have a number of different tools on it that do image processing, uh, medical imaging, land stat um, processing, and um, just a, a great number of kinds of things. Okay, so you can, you can rotate, translate, warp. Um, everything, um, everything, yeah. Perspective. Absolutely, yeah. There's a perspective Pulse option. Color. Yeah, you can change the color table, or you okay. can like actually go in and I mean, you can rotate the color table. Or you can actually go in and change different colors. You also brought an example, I guess, that shows us some a lot of these things being done, or the rotations and so on with the tack. Well, I brought what I brought was an example of the um, final video, which shows the actual rendered object of the plane flying through the animation, okay. which has been created. And um, I also have another piece that has the um, some work that we did on a storm with some lightning. Okay. Well, what show are we going to see now? We'll see the storm and the and the, oh, the, the storm and the lightning. Yeah. Okay. Now this particular part is something that we just finished, and um, the lightning itself again is composited over the top of the actual cloud sequence. So this is the cactus. These right. are, these are the cacti, and um, the clouds in the background, the sparkles. Okay, each one of those is a separate layer. The shadows are separate. Now, you'll notice that the shadows start to get lighter as the storm comes through this sequence. Those are, each shadow is being um, image processed as it goes um, be, before it gets composited on. And this is the beginning of the storm sequence here. And you have gigabytes of clouds, huh? Well, quite a few, yeah. All drawn by hand. Yeah, and again, the lightning also was done by Katine. And it's, it's also composited over the top of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it looked fairly natural. The clouds look good. Yeah, that was a really exciting thing to do. I mean, we were really, all of us were really, you know, Did finally... you talk about doing splines or anything to try and make uh, fake clouds or any algorithmic clouds? We thought about that, um, but basically the kinds of things we wanted to do um, were to go through, you know, big changes, and that's kind of difficult to do. There are some people who have actually created clouds and they're really beautiful clouds, but then making the clouds grow and change and become a storm and then break up um, isn't something that one singular algorithm can do very well yeah, at this yeah. point. So you did it sort of the brute force way, but uh, at least have objects and then render them in yeah. different, different yeah. ways. Now see, the, the way the clouds work is that they start with one frame and then it basically cycles through so it starts and ends up on the same frame. So when you see that initial sequence, you'll see the beginning cloud and then that cycles through and then the same cloud starts the storm sequence. Sort of that Rondo cycles form. through. Yeah. And the cactus are basically the same way. We have a minimum subset of cactus, but the movement is scripted throughout like the frame so that you'll see maybe you know, four frames of one, three frames of one, two frames of one, and you'll see the. So you didn't actually movement. draw all the frames by hand. I mean, the cloud is like a cloud, and then you, you modify its perspective and. The cloud. Thickness. The way we drew the clouds is we would like <laughs> Janet would take a cloud and then she would like move it forward mm -hmm. just a little bit, right? And then she would take that and she would copy that and she would move it forward. We have something like. Um, 175 frames of clouds in the storm okay. sequence and about 250 in the regular sequence. Now, sequences. you brought another uh, animation with you, right? The final piece. Now, this is your final piece. So right. This, is, this represents six months of work, is that right? Well, it's not completed yet. The final piece that you see is not completed, but one of the other things that we did is we incorporated um, live action into this and we used some chroma keying to um, integrate the video into the live action. And you're going to see in the video that this video goes through the guy's eye. What we had um, in his eye was an actual green contact, and we chroma keyed on the green contact. Okay, so. well, let's uh, let's see it then. Okay. Can we roll the tape? <laughs> well, I, I guess we have a technical difficulty, but I'm sure it'll be on soon. Well, just I'll just talk a little bit more about it while we're waiting for okay. it to come up. Um, when we actually move in to the eye, 
you'll see the actual animation begin to become larger and larger. And you're going to see the same initial sequence that you saw in the storm sequence, but then instead of rotating into the, um, the storm sequence, it actually uses the same clouds over, and then it actually comes, um, the plane actually flies on top of that first cloud sequence. So we're really repeating the clouds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um... <laughs> Oh, now, here it is. Go. Okay. This is a guy sitting in a restaurant. Right. And now he's looking up, and you'll start to see that he looks like the man that fell to earth. Mm-hmm. And you can barely begin to see the animation. And you see the sparkles starting to come up. And this is the same um, section that we saw earlier. And you can hear the, the music. We just had that sweetened by a... The whole thing that you see with the eye and the chroma key was done by a, a group in San Francisco was called the San Francisco Production Group. And they did a music sweetening for us as well. And that's the, uh, the 3D plane that just flew through. Okay. Well, looks um, like a lot of work. And, and uh, I mean, like any art, you work a long time and get, get uh, a small uh, yeah, artifact, right? That's right, yeah. It's all a lot about, of hours. Yeah, well, we do the same thing with this program. So. Yes, I've noticed. Uh, anyway, um, what else can you tell us about the TAC, just in terms of uh, how much memory does it have, do you know? No, okay. Um, what we really used the TAC for was uh, as a processor for the tools, and I really worked most mm -hmm. closely with the tools, and particularly it, with the animation tools. It's a tools. special purpose processor that's built on two cards that fit in a Sun workstation? That's correct. <clears throat> Those that's cards correct. are about this size then? Well, the Sun cards are typically about right. that size. They're a square, and they fit into the back of the machine and plug <clears> into the back plane. Do you know how much they cost? Um, I don't usually discuss that. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's great. But the, one of the things that the TAC is targeted towards is the high-end graphics market. Okay. And um, we've done a number of different things with so it. So it also does ray tracing, then? The actual, the, the GB that flew through in the sequence right. was ray traced. Oh. Oh, okay. okay. Well, that's, that's, that's amazing. Frame actually. by frame. Yeah, it, takes, it took about uh, 20 minutes of frame well, for the TAC to, to, to ray trace one of those frames. Thank you for being here. And thank that you. brings us to our thought for the day. So, okay, great. Um, you know, on this program, we've seen repeatedly that people who grew up to become the best programmers and make great contributions often were driven by curiosity to gain access to systems or information without permission. Curiosity is the natural province of youth, and thankfully, we haven't yet managed to legislate it out of existence. Laws were recently passed which make it a crime to access computers or information for which you are not authorized. Everyone agrees that data security is important. Unfortunately, this law will have two effects which tend to undermine our long-term data security. First, it turns our best and brightest youth, who are potentially our best computer technologists, into criminals at an early age. Second, it limits the type of probing which locates shortcomings in security. Most security problems, once identified, can be easily repaired, but stop testing any system and it will eventually deteriorate and fail. Continuing on our current path will cause U.S. computer system security to deteriorate to the level of the Soviets. Control Data Corpor Corporation <laughs> recognized the value of their statewide malicious users group and developed a symbiotic relationship with their young computing enthusiasts. Computing resources were given in trade for continuing bug reports and the promise to report security problems. Down this path lie the most secure computer systems achievable. This path is available to us on the national level. The existing laws could be amended to provide immunity from prosecution if a method for gaining unauthorized access to data were reported within a short grace period. This puts everyone back on the same team and is analogous to telling your neighbor that he left his keys in the lock. Of course, if data are destroyed, the perpetrator should be prosecuted as you would prosecute any vandal. Well, thanks for being on High Tech Heroes, Maggie. And, Thank uh, you, Sean. No, it's great uh, to see the animation, and I'd like to you know, talk more about it and maybe play with some of your toys. OK. Uh, and uh, what do you think? You, know, you think in the future it'll get easier to, to manipulate things? Thank you for joining us this week for High Tech Heroes. Be sure to tune in again next week when we will bring you more entertaining information about the people and ideas behind the scenes in high tech industry. And now, this is your announcer, Susie Brown, 
wishing you the best of luck and a pleasant week. Au revoir. This episode of High Tech Heroes has been made possible in part from grants from Kinetic Microscience of San Jose, California, Cybernetic Arts of Sunnyvale, California, Com Disco Systems Incorporated of Foster City, California, and Big D Closeouts of Sunnyvale, California. <laughs>